I'm going to hand it over to you, Nish, again, to share a, a short presentation on each level of spiral dynamics uh, from blue to turquoise and how they might respond to AI. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll just share my screen. So this is going to be very quick, like five minutes, to seven minutes. And all I'm looking at here is, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the spiral dynamics model of human development. So all I'm looking at here is how each of the levels of development in spiral dynamics, going from blue to turquoise, might view or react to this phenomenon of AI. And I'm, I've been in touch with a Berlin Leipzig based project called the Power of Moo that's done mm. some work in this area. And I'm drawing on some of their work here. <laughs> so blue. So those of you who aren't too familiar with spiral dynamics. So blue is the kind of level of traditional thinking. And you find a lot of traditional religious thinking here. So here are some possible ways in which blue might respond to AI. Human beings are progressing too fast. We don't really know what we're doing. We shouldn't trust human reason and human science as much as we do. We should trust our traditions more than we should trust our never ending quest for so-called progress. And we should choose our futures more wisely. We should realize our limitations and we shouldn't try to play God. Mm -hmm. We should go more slowly. We should make wiser judgments. Mm -hmm. So this is a possible way that the blue traditional concrete operational thinking might respond to or react to um, AI. So moving on, the next stage is what we call orange. So this is the rational, scientific, empirical, materialist stage. So this is one way in which orange might see AI here. Our future is very bright. It's filled with so many endless possibilities and potential. We should seize every chance we can to improve and perfect human existence. Every breakthrough and every innovation has the potential to give us a better future, a better life. AI has the potential to provide us with opportunities to better our lives and resolve our problems. We should reach for the stars, progress as far as we possibly can. Science is the key to that. So let us pursue knowledge and let's use that knowledge to generate prosperity for all of us. Mm. So that's the orange view. And it's interesting what Michael said earlier is that um, sentence completion tests done recently came to the conclusion that much, much of AI at the moment is operating at this level in terms of thinking or the thinking that it's simulating. The green level, this is very roughly the, the liber liberal progressive level, uh, postmodern level uh, stage of development. And this, this stage might be a lot more cautious and even antagonistic in some ways to what it sees AI as doing. So here is a possible way green might respond to AI. AI will take us over. It's yet another tool of capitalism. It will make the rich richer and it will make the rest of us suffer. We have to stand against it. We have to protect our human artists, not replace them with machines. We mustn't, let we mustn't let computers replace our hearts and our souls. We don't need to give machines more power than they already have. AI can never replace the depth and the beauty of human emotion. We must protect human culture and human creativity. We must develop things that unite us, not invest in things like AI that will divide us even further. So this is a possible more negative view, cautious view that green might take towards AI. And moving forward to yellow, which is a more integral stage, multi-perspectival stage of development. AI is just a tool. It's neither good nor bad in itself. We can use it either wisely or unwisely. Each wise use of AI allows something new to unfold in our human story and development. Mm. There are different perspectives and different angles through which AI can be seen. 
There is beauty and necessity in this diversity and wisdom in integrating this diversity with intelligent discrimination. So yellow here will try to take into consideration all the perspectives that we've seen so far and try to integrate them in a healthy way. And finally, turquoise. Now, turquoise, we're starting to move in what we into what we could refer to as a more spiritual awareness or the beginnings of real spiritual awareness here. The pain and the suffering of humanity is part of me and it's part of us. If and only if AI can help to assist in the emergence of a new me and a new we that can ease this pain and suffering, then I welcome it as part of the healing and continued evolution of Gaia. Mm. And to the extent that it cannot help or even hinder the assistance, sorry, hinder that emergence, then of course we, we don't welcome it in quite the mm -hmm. same way. Mm -hmm. So a quick survey of possible ways that the different stages might view AI. Yes. Beautifully described, Nish. Uh, I'm going to yeah, thank you. To the group to add follow-up questions. Cindy, if you want to go first. Yes, wonderfully done, Nish. Thank you. That was a really good short, you know, mm. summary. Thank you for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, I noticed you started with blue, which helped to keep it shorter, but we are kind of missing the beige, purple, and red. And the level that most worries me is red, because red seems to be having its uh, reemergence in the political world with strong men around the world, and men being the operative word most of the time, and power being the driver, power at any cost. And as we saw with September 11th, the use of orange technology by people at lower levels of the spiral, blue, red, purple, willing to kill for their perspective, took an orange technology to a devastating direction. And I think there is the potential for red, just like it misused harvesting of Facebook data for the manipulation and con control and gain of power to take AI in that direction in a frightening way where it becomes kind of a 1984 novel. We don't know what's true and what's not true. You put on your reality headsets and you get your version of Fox News or CNN and you don't know what is true and you mm -hmm. get lost down the rabbit hole. And, and so that would be the ad I would make on the spiral is the red can't be factored out. Red is active right now. Mm -hmm. Michael, did you have something to add? To mm, no, thank you. Thank you, Samara. Now, I wanted to point out that an important question is which color is going to be in control of the AI and which color is going to be <laughs> developing the AI. AI. Mm -hmm. And I think, at least to abate Cindy's concerns currently, it's not, it's not the red group that's developing AI, at least. So they're not going to be in the driver's seat in terms of the initial development. They might take it over somehow, but they're not going to be the ones building it. Ah. Uh. Sorry, can I jump in here real quick? Thanks. Sure. I think, so that's an interesting um, uh, comment and point there, Dan. And the one thing I think that's um, important for us all to keep in mind, especially as we're looking at the interpretation or the perception anyways of AI at the varying levels of the spiral is to keep in mind, of course, that uh, Claire Graves said it's not types of people, but it's types in people. And a lot of times it's going to be the context in which we're interacting with our environment that's going to provoke or um, or will sort of be the context for which will will lead from a certain level in the spiral. Sorry, that was a little bit of a mouthful for me. But does that make some sense? So to some extent, um, uh, well, 
In other words, like somebody, even though you could be operating most of the time, of course, it may be a higher level of development, but if you're under, um, if you're feeling under threat, then you could easily devolve into red and use that technology then uh, from that that driver or those values, if you will. Anyway, sorry. There you go. Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what I would add to that, I agree, um, Marie, is, you know, we are all every color that precedes our highest level. So I may have moments of yellow, moments of turquoise, but I contain within me the spectrum. The whole spectrum may be healthy or not healthy. And that expression of health or not health could be context dependent. Um, whenever we're scared, we go to the level that meets where we think our life conditions are. So if I think I'm in life and death survival mode, I will go to the bottom of the, of the spiral to survive. Um, and depending on how much happens with climate change, there may be a great deal of the world that is very truly in survival mode. So I think this is a super complex question. And uh, thank you, Dan. I, I agree with you that orange will be most present in the evolution of this technology, as it was with the creation of the aircraft that were flown into September 11th. So it's complicated. It's the motives of each person. And I forget who mentioned earlier that we have a lot of people um, on the spectrum who are involved potentially in the development, it was Sally maybe, of these technologies. And people on the spectrum, and I have very good friends on the spectrum are baffled by some aspects of life, such as EQ related issues and having empathy with some aspects of other humans. Empathy with animals is easier for people on the spectrum than empathy with other humans typically. And so this becomes super complicated. Who is doing what, when, for what reason, in what context? Um, so I think we have to look at the whole complexity of it. What's the upside? And I think there's a lot of upside for helping us navigate complex climate issues and thinking about correlations and connections and systems that we couldn't hold in any one human brain. Let's dump our brains together in this big mush we call AI and see what we can come up with. And there's the potential for some pretty awful manipulation and everything in between. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to add to that wonderful acknowledgement of the spectrum in every meaning of its word, of that word, um, color spectrum, and 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 who's inventing AI right now. Um, but also, there's you can look at that spiral from from a yin yang perspective as well. So the red, orange, yellow stages tend to emerge and create new things and don't know any limits so there then you enter the shadow the dysfunction when it just keeps turning that stage into exploiting and then the cooler colors always try to set a limit on that so the blue will try to set a limit on red and the green will try to set a limit on orange and so forth so we did describe turquoise there, which seems to want to integrate both the, the emergence and the desire to see how that works for community benefit. So those are the two drives in the spiral and we oscillate. But I personally think at turquoise, we're trying to do both. We're trying to create and set ethics and understand that it has to benefit everybody. Um, for it to be ethical. So, so kind of at the lower stages, that oscillation is quite far apart as we develop and then kind of gets closer and closer. And I intuitively think Turquoise is trying to see how we can continue to create, but make sure it benefits everybody. That's the yin-yang integration. Thanks. Thank you. So go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that's come up for me while I've been listening to this whole conversation unfold is, for, is of course, to think about human history in the last 300,000 years of our evolution. And um, um, we are, as a species, 
I think we have made progress in our evolution. And there's a lot of things about the life that we live today that we could see as, as better. And let me use, and coming back to some of the point anyways, that other people have made, of course, is that sometimes it causes crises in order for us to make that jump in our evolution. It makes me think of nuclear war, of nuclear bombs. It wasn't that long ago, of course, that we dropped a few of those. And fortunately, they haven't been used since. And I think we learned a lot from that uh, decision and what we saw happen. Um, so that's one thing that I've, I've been keeping in mind. And then um, the other thing, of course, is um, so in general, sort of a lack of, of critical thinking is a common theme that we all seem to express concern over more and more emphasis of a disembodied human because we're discounting even more than the knowledge that is here in our bodies that most of the time I think is overridden by our thinking mind, which is interesting the way I think that that plays um, around each other. So, um, there's some questions anyways I have around um, AI and its ability to have metacognition. And then even further from that, another thing that I'm holding, and it would be interesting to see if anybody has any views on this. But if we think about Rupert Sheldrake's The Morphic Field and Field Theory, which there's a lot of, I think, other teachers, of course, who have put something like that out there anyways. And if we think about big mind, well, then where does that leave us in this of <clears throat> humans and AI and the role of AI in our evolution? So that's a question sort of out to the group. There you go. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Yeah, and maybe that was the comment. Good luck to us. <laughs> That's I'm again going to try. I'm again trying to be ridiculously over optimistic, as my orange self evidently is. So I'm going to start with limbic capitalism. So it doesn't sound positive right now. So we're we're just hacking the heck out of our poor limbic system, and most companies just are. You have scientists sitting there figuring out how to make ROI off of our dopamine network. So that was not very positive. But as a yoga teacher, what I'm trying to do is, is help people get embodied, right? Get embodied. And I heard several people just mention that. And I see people building their awareness. And this is, I teach kid yoga, which is extremely challenging. But I have this vision that we could teach the children, we could teach the children embodied ethics, that they could slow down and feel their breath and feel their body and start realizing that these apps that the companies are building and also snack food and everything else. And when I heard about the sex bots, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know about that. That's so horrible and so terrible. But, anyways, so if we could teach the children, that limbic capitalism is turning them into a bot, then they could slowly build tools, internal tools of awareness of their sympathetic nervous system, right brain versus left brain, and build the ability to go into their use of technology with intention, notice when they've gone off track, pull themselves back, build focus. Is it possible? I'm just going to say I believe in it. And I also want to just play something I think Maria or Marie wasn't saying clearly, but I know she was thinking it, is that we need to have some faith in humanity. Like, I think it's too easy to go into the death spiral because I see it in my sisters who are very blue. They're very much like, this is a terrible, terrible thing. We need to stay away from it. And I think it's a gut reaction and I think that if we can say, like, go more to yellow turquoise, like, hey, we could use these, but what's the steps? And I think the first step is to start teaching children just to be aware of their emotional state, 
Notice when they're just trying to eat too much sugar and any of these things, it's all just limbic nervous system hacking and help them not be bots. So I'm actually building a curriculum with my library to start teaching this. And I think the AI generation of art is so engaging for kids that it's a nice little way for them to first use their brain, become intentional, and then go into the computer with them, with that consciousness. So I'm going to just stay positive and that's my approach, but I think it needs to be scaled and it needs to be a lot of people valuing that and helping the kids because they're going to be writing the code that's going to run our lives. Okay. It's like these kids in 10 to 15 years are going to be writing code that we, we can't even imagine what it's going to be doing. So they need to get upgraded and conscious up, up leveled. So I believe in the children. Maybe I'm a fool, but so far I do believe that we have had a lot of good progress and I'm going to be the positive one. Nish, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to add an extra dimension to what I spoke a few minutes ago about how the different stages might view AI. Uh, those different stages, we can think of those as, as levels of development that we go through. But there's also another dimension to this, which in integral theory, we call the lines of development. So we, we can be at a certain stage in one aspect of our um, personalities, um, but at um, uh, maybe an earlier stage in another aspect of our personalities. So the example I want to give is that we might be, for example, our, our cognitive line of development might, for example, be orange or yellow, so relatively mature cognition going on. But our moral or ethical line of development might be much earlier, purple, red, blue. So there's a, there's a saying in some philosophers use, which is that is doesn't imply ought. Just because we can do something, our cognition allows us to do something, it doesn't follow that we should do something. It, it just because our moral development says that's okay. So what we really need to think about here are not just the stages of development, but also these lines of development. And given the kind of positive and negative impact that AI could have, we, we need moral development as well as cognitive development. Mm 